so in this segment we're going to be talking about Cornish fishermen who are Tories and just also more people in uh, Cornwall turning against the Conservative Party because of the lies they told over fishing. So some of these people were incredibly naive and I would honestly say a bit stupid. Um, another part in the next, in another part of the video, we're going to be talking about the fact that the UK exports and imports a lot of fish from the EU, which I find quite strange in some regards um, for certain kinds of fish. And we're also going to talk about how the the idea that the UK was going to go back to the old twelve mile limit is uh, was never going to happen because of a UN mandate. So um, let's just go straight in. And we'll talk about this uh, this article. And, um, you know, honestly, I did have some sympathy for some of these people before. But at the same time, I, I, it's really gone. Because these people, by the looks of things, voted for Brexit. Voted Tories at 2019 elections. Um, you know, were promised a lot. Didn't get it. Now they're angry. Fine. But, you know, they were trying to take, you know, business uh, from other fishermen in the EU, in Europe. So... How much sympathy can you feel for someone who tried to rob someone else effectively of their li livelihood and then now they're mad they got hit with their own move? Uh, mirror Force. Your own attack will be your downfall. I activate Mirror Force! Or Reverse Card, shall we say. And he's got this guy, uh, Michael uh, Bost Bostal. I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, don't really care. He lives in a place called Newlin. I think that's how you pronounce it, in western tip of Cornwall. No doubt I've got that wrong, and someone in the comments will tell me I've got that wrong, uh, but feel free to do so. Um, he has been awake for 30 hours and needs to prepare for uh, another couple of days at sea, but he can still summon the energy to condemn the Conservative Party for striking a deal with the EU um, he like and he that he like many others in this tight knit fishing town regard, regard as a betrayal. So you know this guy Michael's arguments are pretty bad to be honest. Um, and uh, yeah, you know he says we're dying out here. We're all getting older. There aren't enough youngsters following us. Uh, we could follow. We could have gotten more fish and created a better future for the youngsters. It's a missed opportunity. So what he's basically saying is he didn't want a deal on fishing, and that would have pushed us a lot closer to a no deal. So because I can't imagine the EU saying that. All right, you can have the deal, and um, you know no EU fishing boats in within UK waters. Um, I can't imagine the EU agreeing to such a deal. Um, and so what can we learn from this? This, this guy thought the UK. He genuinely still thinks the UK could um, catch all the fish around the uh, 12 mile limit or much more of it and also keep the EU as an export market. Do you think people in the EU would keep buying British fish if they saw, you know, if they because they don't see the going back to the old 12 mile limit as, um, you know, a great thing for Britain. They see it as a betrayal and um, kind of an attack on, you know, their, their livelihoods, their country. So do you think they would still buy British fish? If, um, you know, it turned out that uh, EU fishermen couldn't fish in the waters around here like they've done um, since the, uh, I think, the implementation of the common fisheries policy. Do you think people in the EU would be happy about that? Do you think they would continue to keep buying British fish? Because we do import a ton of fish from the EU, but we also export a ton to the EU as well. So it's a two-way street. So the UK trade agreement with the EU, which is the called the TTA for short, uh, which came into force in January, gives British uh, boats a greater share of fish that can be caught in UK waters, but also allows European boats to fish in those waters till at least 2026. Um, with many in the industry expecting that to continue for years to come, border holdups and requirements to purify, purify shellfish before export to the EU of hit earnings. I mean, the the um, the shellfish industry, the exports to the EU of shellfish is pretty much dead, especially since the UK have started to reclassify waters. And if it's um, if it's clear that those waters aren't actually much cleaner, and the UK is just playing fast and loose with. Um, classifications then i can see the eu just saying no no we're going to ban completely ban exports of uh, british uh, shellfish to the eu because um they're not being checked i think grade a shellfish you can just eat it like it doesn't need to be purified um that's why i can go straight through grade b shellfish is not that's not the case so if we keep going down this road um the, the entire shellfish export might be gone so uh we carry on the struggles of the fishing industry could pose problems for the Conservatives in Cornwall, um, you know, because there are you know uh, local elections coming up, 
Um, and also, this also talks about the G7 summit in Cornwall, where Boris Johnson would have to tread carefully in places like Newlin, which is home to England's biggest fishing fleet, which is fairly interesting that these people are complaining so much. Um, so, B- Bossis, though, who I've, does his name I've butchered, um, a Brexit supporter will not be supporting the Tories on um, May the 6th. Uh, we are not going to forget when it comes to voting time, he says. I don't feel like the Conservatives d- uh, deserve my vote at the moment. Further down the quay, um, Bracken Pierce, uh, Pierce, not, it said, um, now, um, you know, blah, 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 you know, Brexit stuff. Um, he said that, you know, without the support of the fishermen and them, you know, travelling up the Thames with their fishing boats, that Brexit, the referendum probably wouldn't have been won. So thanks. Thanks, mate. You know, great job you've done. Now he feels betrayed, saying they lied to us, they used us to get Brexit. Without the boats uh, going up the Thames, Brexit would never have happened. Have you got any data for that, Chief? Um, he says um, from the deck of his boat, now he says they're in the worst of both worlds. So clearly a guy who does not believe Boris Johnson, he goes, it's a complete sellout. It's a betrayal. The deal we have gotten is lose-lose. We've got friction at the borders and they, EU fishing boats, have still got access to our waters. Johnson has lost his support. But, you know, I've seen the tariffs from the EU, which is something uh, we can mention now. Um, you know, depending on the product, it does range. And obviously, um, you know, some of this stuff is on frozen fish, but the ones on cod are on fresh fish. So there's a 12% tariff on fresh cod going to the EU. Um, And so (laughs) do you want, you know, cod to go off in price in the EU by 12%? And do you think that, you know, EU um, consumers would carry on buying British fish if um, they felt like we uh, we, we did them dirty? Do Do you think they'll carry on buying your stuff? Come on, dude, be serious. And also the friction is bad, but um, some of that stuff, uh, I'm not sure if there is a fix through an SPS agreement, but um, you voted for it, Chief. You said you knew what you voted for. That's what you guys said. You know, Project Fear doesn't exist, does it? Um, Newland fishers and fish merchants survived the near complete shutdown of the hospitality industry during the pandemic by selling more to shops and directly to the public, which would be good news considering um, that they'll be slightly less reliant on exports. But I don't think British consumers pay as much for um, UK um, fished uh, fish because otherwise, why would they export it? Um, but Brexit has caused a whole new set of problems because 80% of the catch they land usually gets exported to other European countries. So Yes, we do import. I think it's around 70%. It does mention it in a BBC article that we're going to be talking about. But most of our fish gets exported. So these guys have taken a massive hit on their export market. And if you think we left with a no deal, do you think that you would be um, shipping out anywhere near 80%? Nah, mate. You'd be, you'd be lucky. You'd be lucky to hit a third of that. From Parsons, um, a ha- the harbour master, uh, said fishermen would, um, would say it's been a lash up. It means uh, really bad. Okay, just say really bad then. Um, in January, next day delivery became two or three days, and that hugely impacted on the price. Obviously, if your product isn't reliable, people aren't going to buy from you. Um, he talks about prices falling for fish, what, um, and they were not worth catching. So hake, I've never heard of. Do you know what? Let's just Google hake. What is hake? What kind of fish is hake? I should have Googled this before. Um, it looks fine. Maybe I'll try it at some point. It's quite expensive, though. Um... But I don't think that's a commonly eaten fish in the UK. I've never seen it in supermarkets. Uh, normally, hake sells about five to six pounds uh, for a kilo, which is quite expensive. It fluctuates daily, um, but we're down to 60 pence. So we might see more hake on Brit- in British supermarkets because um, at the moment, the price value has gone down by about <laughs> a lot. You know, six from six pounds a kilo, from up to about six pounds a kilo to 60 pence a kilo. That's a massive drop says Parsons in order to make the trip one boat going out for five days you need to clear two pound twenty a kilo so they'll be making a couple of quid probably about two quid per kilo because the exporter still has to make a profit as well the person who buys up all the fish and then exports it so you can see the big impact that Brexit has had on these guys and um, no doubt we'll see um, this fish maybe more in the UK but if he's got to make two pound twenty a kilo um, I'm not sure how many British people would want to buy this fish out you know, for, you know, at three, four or five pounds. I, I don't know. Um, outside the port, so you've got these two people, the na- uh, neighbours, who typically vote Conservative, are considering voting for other parties. The fishermen have been um, S on, 
says uh, Helen Lug, uh, a, chi- a chef who has lived in Newlyn her whole life. Uh, for working villages like this, which rely on fishing, it's bad. Why are you voting Tory if you're a working village for a start? And also, surely, if you're a chef, you'd be happy. You've got access to way cheaper fish now. No? So these people go on to say, each boat that goes out, um, we watch out for it. Uh, each boat that goes out, we watch for it to come back uh, come back in, uh, says uh, Jan Crawford. Sorry, this is someone else saying that. Um, they work hard and risk a lot. Fishing is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Um, she will not be voting uh, Conservative in uh, May, saying they will li- we will lie to. She says, I used to be a Conservative, but not anymore. And what's the, you know, we'll talk about the running theme after, towards the end of the cycle, you know. Uh, so Roger Harding is a Conservative councillor who will not be standing again, saying um, they, the Tories will lose votes over this. Uh, in a way, the fishermen were expecting something that couldn't be delivered. But who who told them this could be delivered? Hmm. Saying that, but certainly there is unhappiness. Um, they will be showing their discontent. And, you know, this is what you get for voting Tory. If you're a working class person voting Tory, you know, you're voting against your best interest. You are hurting yourself. And you, you are too stupid to understand that. So the two main candidates vying for the newly created um, Mouse Hole, uh, New Lynn and St. Uh, Burien Electoral Division are avoiding the political fallout from the deal. The Lib Dems energetic newcomer Talia Marrington is keen to help the port prosper outside of the EU. Good luck with that. Um, but it's steering clear of issues connected to Brexit. She's saying it's been so divisive. Uh, to me, it's happened. We need to move on. I literally don't mention it. So what are you going to run on then? What are you going to run on? Because these fishermen need help. They need help. What are you going to run on? If you're not going to run and talk about the issues around Brexit. You know, you could be pushing for joining the single market. That would help resolve, I think, most of the issues here. Honestly. Um, a new Conservative uh, candidate, William Bolito, another newcomer, said it's saddened that some in Newlyn won't be turning up for the party. Uh, he says, I'm disappointed by it, he says, on his farm in the windswept hills above the village. But he adds that he understands their frustrations. They didn't get what they expected. And I do feel for them. So what are you going to do about it? Um, so we go on. So uh, uh, we spoke about the tariffs. Um, so this is what the UK fishing waters would be under the 12 mile limit. So it does go quite far. Obviously, if you have an independent Scotland, um, you know, I think Scotland starts around here somewhere. Um, this whole uh, northern area is locked off. This would be all Scottish water under the 12 mile limit. Um, so you'd only have these areas here um if scotland became independent and we'll be talking about that during the week at some point no doubt so the issue is that if we look here the un mandates that mandates that each country has an exclusive economic zone of 200 nautical miles before this before our entrance to the eu british waters constituted a 12 mile limit so 200 nautical miles is about 1.2 miles so um under the un um rules we would not have anywhere near this amount of um uh, sort of your uh, fishing area um, and you know the UN is fairly toothless so I don't know if the UN could do a lot but um, from what I've read we would have to negotiate some sort of agreement with our neighboring countries um, so there's that which is you know not great to be honest um, so we've mentioned that so this is about you know the UK so uh, proportion of UK exports going to the EU you've got mostly herring which is bought by the Netherlands and I think the uh, by Norway, I think it does mention in another article, uh, card, which is interesting because we import a lot of card and we export a lot of card. So is that process card that we're buying in from the EU or what's the deal with that? I couldn't find a lot of information that shellfish. Um, most of that's going to be gone uh, because of the fact that you can't export shellfish from grade B waters. So most of that industry is going to be gone. Most of this export here gone. Um, that's 80 percent of the um, shellfish, I think. Uh, mackerel which is bought by i think again uh the dutch and salmon uh about 50 percent of um so proportion of uk fish exports going to the eu so that looks like about 50 percent of our salmon going to the eu so if we go to um a fi- uh, another article 
which is it tells you that the majority of fish eaten in the UK is imported. Some 83% of the cod consumed in the UK comes from abroad, alongside 58% of its haddock. The catch is um, 5% and 7% of haddock, while the UK fleet catches a lot of herring, 93% of which is exported mostly to Norway and the Netherlands. So I don't think this is because of the common fisheries policy that we only catch 5% and 7% of haddocks, most likely to do with um, which areas kind of fish um, typically live in um because it'd be really strange that we fish loads of herring to export it but then buy loads of cod like surely we just go to the area with all the cod so that's kind of my interpretation of why we do that we're going to look at the fishing areas in a minute overall the uk imports 70 percent of its fish and exports 80 percent of what it catches under the common fisheries policy the uk has the most quotas for haddock and decent quotas for cod so obviously th the reason must be the areas where the fish live in um considering that we are very reliant on imports of cod and haddock and we export the fish we typically don't eat. So the only way to resolve this would be to kind of encourage people in Britain to start eating um, the fish that's more kind of nearby um, geographically rather than having, you know, cod and haddock, which is imported. Uh, we go to our uh, next bit. So if we actually look at this map here, you can see the area. So this is um, the area of Atlantic cod. So I don't know if there are different species of cod. My knowledge of fishing is embarrassing. But you can see, you know, a lot of it is here in the north. Um, some of it over by the USA. Um, and I believe that is uh, Greenland up there. Geography is not one of my strong suits. But, you know, you can see that the UK does have a large area. Um, if you think about how big the 12 mile limit is. But, um, you know, it's not going to be all of it. Even if we went back to the 12 mile limit. Um, we wouldn't get all the fish that we consume in this country. At least it's very unlikely. Um, that, combined with the fact that we wouldn't actually have a 12-mile limit, it'd be close to a 1.2-mile limit under uh, UN rules, you know, as strong or as weak as they are. And also we would lose our entire export market. And we go back to this article, which tells you that the UK exports 80% of what it catches. So if we lose our export market, or at least some of it, UK fishermen will be in a much worse position as well as potentially having tariffs paid on their products making them even more uncompetitive and also maybe you know because we might have to put tariffs on uh, fish under you know WTO rules you know what is our uh, tariff policy going to be on fish uh, if if it's the case that the UK puts tariffs on fish um you know that means that eu exports are going to be more expensive to the uk so the eu might stop exporting the fish we actually like in this country but um you know i have to stress that i don't have all the answers on why the industry is why it, why it is like this all i can comment on is the information i can find so i hope this video was um you know decent you know at least gave some information that was useful to people but you know the main takeaways from this video are that again once again like we mentioned with the cladding conservative voters only get upset about things when the conservative party does something to impact them these people have very little to no empathy they have very little empathy for anyone else but when things go don't go their way you know they get all upset and like oh i'm not voting for the tories again or they've impacted my business or they're, they're not going to help me with the cladding around my house so I ain't gonna vote for you, but when it comes to you know other people, so I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna help other people. You know you're poor, deal with it. You know so these fishermen are gonna lose a lot of money. Um, you know that might push them under, but you know they're poor, they're gonna have to deal with it. That's what conservative party ideology is: sink or swim. You know you ain't gonna get help from the government, not meant to. You know, get through it or don't. We don't care. That's what the conservative party ideology is. They don't care about anyone apart from their donors. So I'm sorry, you know, to all the people mentioned in this article, but you doomed yourselves. You voted for Brexit. You vehemently supported Brexit. You supported the Conservative Party and now it's come back to haunt you. So well done, you know, and, you know, the Labour Party and the Lib Dem Party need to get involved in these sorts of constituencies to try and take back these voters. But how are you going to do it? What are your policies going to be? Because you are going to have to talk about Brexit. In, you know, the main point that I would make to these people is that, you know, is this the Brexit you voted for? And if the answer is no, you've got a way in with them. If they say yes, then they've got no chance because they do they accept that they've doomed the fishing industry. But anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.